Okay, so I'd like to welcome our next speaker to the stage. This is uh, Maria from Amadeus. Hello, hello, Alan. Hola, Maria. How are you? Very good, and you? <laughs> very good, thank you. Very good. So uh, Maria is here today to talk about you know, how to move from a corporate to an open API mindset. Uh, I imagine that's no easy task. Indeed, it's uh, mm. a complicated but exciting journey. So I will, I will be covering that in a moment. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, let's, uh, let's uh, go straight into that then without any further ado. So um, you wanna go ahead and share your, your screen. Yes. Um, and again, to the audience, if you have any questions to, to Maria, feel free to just pop them there in the, the online chat, and then uh, we can take those at the, the end of the session. All right, so it seems like your uh, slides are up. So yeah, the stage is yours. Perfect, thank you, Alan. So I'm really, really excited to, to be with all of you here today. And it's always a pleasure to join the API Days community. But I find the theme of this event on transforming industries and experiences particularly relevant because in the last few months, the world has been turned upside down. And so that transformation is not really an option, right? And change has become sort of that new normal that we talk about all the time. Now, if you think about it, for most of us, change is nothing new because if you're working in an API initiative, you are somehow driving change at your organization. And that, as Salam was saying, uh, is no easy task because launching an API initiative involves much more than technical challenges. So it involves political, cultural, and strategic obstacles that you must overcome to make sure that your organization fully embraces that change. So in a way, it's like a, a mindset shift. It's uh, shaking the foundations. So the question that I want to cover today is, how do you overcome those obstacles to your API initiative? And how do you guide your organization through that transformation? So I'm Maria, I lead a strategy at Amadeus for Developers. And just to provide some context, Amadeus is the leading IT provider for the travel industry. So we build solutions that connect the travel ecosystem and to give you examples, so we help um, airlines, airports, hotels, travel agencies, and many other pl uh, players run their operations. Now, in terms of APIs, um, they have been a core part of our business for over two decades. And currently, we manage over a 1,000 APIs. So as you can see, they're uh, nothing new to us, and they're sort of part of our DNA. Now, three years ago, we embark on a totally new journey to create an open API program and offer access to any developer um, around the world. Now, I was part of that journey from the very beginning. So today I will be sharing some story stories from the trenches and some practical tips on overcoming obstacles to your API initiative. Now, this is a very broad topic and we could talk about many different things. But today, I will focus on some of the questions that we get asked more often. And those are, first, how to explain the value of your API initiative. Second, how to set up the framework to execute it and achieve alignment. Third, how to manage risk. And fourth, equally important, how to keep your stakeholders engaged after you actually launch that initiative. So let's start. Uh, let's imagine that you're ready to get your API initiative off the ground. So uh, you've defined your vision, your goals, which are aligned with your business strategy. You've pretty much done all your homework. Now, the first roadblocks that you may hit are the competing business priorities. Because with so many projects out there for uh, your top management to choose from, it almost feels like a jungle. So it's natural that the first question you must answer is, why should we bet on this initiative? Like, why APIs over something else? And in fact, if you've ever gone through that journey of launching a new API initiative, uh, chances are you've come across objections like these ones, right? So it's about the budget, not the right timing, we have other priorities. And the truth is that selling API initiatives internally sometimes can be hard. So how do you help your stakeholders see the value? Well, simple as it sounds, uh, the first step is to tell them, to build 
a clear and compelling case. And here I want to highlight three things that you can do to achieve that. The first one is to explain all the ways that APIs can capture value for your organization. And obviously, the, the most obvious one is, uh, ben is revenues. Because as you know, APIs can help you uh, reach new customer segments, increase adoption, or unlock new business models. Today, on average, APIs make up a third of IT companies' revenue. Now, a word of advice here, and this part is, is very important, uh, do not make your business case the sole focus of your discussions. Because the truth is that time to return on investment for APIs can be long. And that is especially true if you're thinking about opening public APIs. So it's important that you manage your stakeholder expectations from the very beginning. And instead of talking just about revenues, you can talk about opportunities for value generation. And the truth is, there are countless benefits of adopting APIs. So always make sure that you adjust the pitch to each stakeholder's needs. Uh, just to give you some examples, let's say that you're talking to the IT teams. Well, then you may want to highlight the efficiency and automation gains and explain how APIs can help their teams save time and money and accelerate time to market. Uh, now, let's say you have to talk to product teams. Well, you can highlight how data sharing with partners uh, can lead to product improvements and help them reach new channels. And really, the list goes on and on for every single department. Even if you think about talking to HR or to brand, uh, for them, it might be interesting to know that the link to innovation is something that can help improve your company's positioning. Now, when you think about this, uh, building this pitch, uh, try to think about how APIs will deliver value at every single level. So uh, starting with your broader ecosystem and going all the way up, thinking about the positive impact for your customers, for your company and shareholders, for the working teams, and for each individual. Why do I highlight this? Uh, well, because people are much more likely to get on board if they can actually see the big picture. And if you're ignoring um, any of these levels, you may be missing some important motivators. So as we were saying, one of the, of the ways to, to go is to explain the benefits. But the second thing that you can do is to use research and data to create a sense of urgency because data is power. And one of the first things that we realized is that we needed to help people see that there was a need for change. And we did so by explaining not only the benefits that I was uh, covering before, but also the risk of not doing anything. And here there are two powerful resources that you can use, which are customer feedback and competitive um, analysis. Much of the pressure to delivering APIs or to improving the APIs that you have may come directly from customers. So if that's your case, use that. So you can talk to customers, perform surveys, and gather their feedback. And that will help you talk about what their needs and their frustrations are. And the, very much, the, the same goes for uh, competitive analysis. So um, being able to show how other companies have succeeded in launching similar um, initiatives, it is much more compelling than, well, you know, just, just you talking about your own assumptions, right? Uh, leaders want uh, proof. Uh, plus, no leader wants to fall behind competition. So if your competitors are offering APIs, but you don't, so what is stopping really your customers from doing business with them, right? And the third thing that you can do is to make your vision tangible for other people because people need to see and feel the change. And with APIs, this can be a challenge because APIs are something incredibly abstract. So we run into this problem often uh, because for many of our stakeholders, APIs will be integration layers, something that was sort of there for a long time that we have been using for a long time, but they will not see APIs as a strategic products or as something to place at the core of our API um, strategy. So something you can do to make uh, APIs more tangible, especially for non-technical audiences, is to build quick prototypes. 
In our case, um, I have to admit that we sort of got stuck in the PowerPoint phase for maybe too long, and that led to losing some uh, momentum. If you, on the other hand, decide to build prototypes that helps people visualize what you can achieve and the kind of ideas that your APIs could be uh, powering. And something that is also incredibly powerful to make your vision tangible is uh, using stories. So you can use storytelling techniques to illustrate the importance of your API initiative and to bring ideas to life. And I like to reinforce this idea because stories are, in a way, the programming language of our minds. Uh, if you think about it, we process the world around us in narrative. We think and, and we talk and we uh, retain information in narrative. So being honest, um, nobody gets inspired with bullet points. Numbers don't inspire, but uh, stories do. And so um, something that, that you can do definitely is uh, relying on this because data will help you persuade people, and that is still important, but it will not inspire them to act. So basically, to build a compelling case, you want to make your rational, but also the emotional case together. So to recap, you can build a compelling case by explaining the benefits that APIs bring to your organization, highlighting the risks of not doing so and creating a sense of urgency, and making your vision tangible through prototyping and storytelling. Now, let's say you build this compelling case, you've got all the approvals, now what? Like, where do you really start to um, execute your API initiative? And at this stage of the journey, you may have to face challenges that are linked to the organization structure, the processes, and even the legacy systems. Just to give you an example, at large corporations, you may find lots of API initiatives that are hard to converge and align. And you may have uh, projects that are scattered among teams, regions, each one of them with a different strategy and level of maturity. That was actually our case. So when we started our program, we found a really complex landscape. And to give you an idea, we identified almost a dozen business initiatives that were linked to APIs. And back then, we used to have a lot of different portals to provide uh, our partners access to the APIs. So how do you make sense out of all of this and set up the right framework? Well, you can work on two main fronts, which are building the right API team and setting up a proper API governance. So first, uh, you may want to build a dedicated team to coordinate and to execute the initiative. And for that, we created a ring fence team that was led by the innovation department on the business side and by the research and development department on the technical side. We started small, and as the program evolved, we continue to grow the team. There is obviously no one size fits all formula here, but um, on, our, on our case, uh, on the business side, we had people working in strategy, uh, program management, product management and user experience, and marketing and developer relations. Now, I know that some companies don't add developer relations to their teams until their APIs are live, but I personally think that is a huge mistake because your um, DevRel experts have the right skills to help lay the foundation for the program. Plus, if you think about it, they are the glue that binds the technical and the business worlds together. So when it comes to educating stakeholders, they can bring immense value. So first is the team, and second is the API governance, because you don't want your team writing solo. So really to succeed, you need to involve everyone, up and down and across all the different business units and functions. That is because at large corporations, it is extremely, extremely unlikely that you can get all the necessary knowledge in a single team. And this is the kind of thing in which you want to invest time to make sure that you get it right. Now, um, I know that I'm about to say something that might be incredibly unpopular, but I believe this is one of those cases where you want to go slow to go fast. Now, it's true that this idea of slowing down sort of goes against the fast-paced uh, tech culture and all these ideas of failing fast. And um, let's be honest, like none of us wakes up excited in the morning thinking, 
yay, another day of alignment meetings, right? But um, here's the thing, strategy matters, people matter. And uh, investing the time in making sure you involve all the relevant people from the beginning will help you move quick and uh, become successful in the long run. So if I'm telling you that you pretty much need to involve everyone somehow, uh, the question is, how do you handle all this complexity? Well, here is where governance comes uh, to rescue, because governance provides clear direction and common ground to everyone. I feel that governance is one of those uh, buzzwords that we hear about at every API event, and yet um, there are different interpretations about what it should mean. So I'm going to explain how it works in our case uh, with four different levels. So first we have the um, API program governance. This is basically the framework to execute the overall program. It helps us make sure that the execution stays aligned with the business objectives and that all stakeholders' um, inputs are taken into account. In our case, we created a core team for the execution and then a steering committee and a committee of advisors with representatives of all the different business units and functions. And above them, we have the vice presidents that were acting as sponsors of the initiative. And this part tends to be also very important, getting their, their support to make this kind of governance model uh, works. Second, you have API platform uh, governance, because for your API initiative, you will want to have a platform that is um, secure, that is stable, and even more importantly, that can scale and evolve as your program grows. You want to deliver the best developer experience to your users while defining the best architecture behind the scenes. And on top of all this, you also want to meet the needs of all your internal API stakeholders. So to achieve this, we created a working framework with uh, product managers representing every each business unit. And they work with the development teams to make all decisions about the platform together. Third, we have data governance, uh, particularly important if you manage public APIs, because there might be concerns about the kind of data that you are going to expose. So in our case, we work with a centralized committee of experts that review every API to make sure that there are no legal, business, or uh, security risks linked to the data that we are going to expose. And four, we have API design governance, which is, I believe, the, the one that we talk about more often in, in these kind of events. And this is critical for any organization to industrialize the API design. So in our case, the uh, governance board, um, it's a community of experts coming from different teams that work together to define a common vision and common uh, rules and guidelines to API design. So just to give you an example, they tackle topics like reusability, uh, API versioning, request and response format, and many more. And the way it works is every time a team in the organization builds an API, the API must be reviewed and approved by the board. So that way we secure consistency. And what's also really cool is that this community balances the power between all the different teams because they grant equal voting rights to every single member. So to recap um, in this second point, we've seen that you can set up the right uh, framework to execute your initiative by creating an API team while also setting up an API governance that facilitates the effective collaboration across the organization. Now, at this point, so we've built a compelling case, we've got all the approvals, we've set up the right framework, but you can still expect some additional challenges. And some of them might be linked to the fear of potential threats. Uh, this is especially true if you're planning to open APIs for the first time. One of the most common concerns is how you're going to make sure that opening your APIs is not going to put your business at risk. Also, if not managed properly, um, opening your APIs can also mean exposing your company to external attacks. And there might be also some performance concerns, because if your public APIs drive volume, uh, you have to make sure that your business can cope with that additional volume without impacting your current customers. 
So you will see these um, common um, common risks and, and potential threats and, and many others. So how do you address all of them and minimize the risks? Well, there are two main things that you can do. And the first one is making risk management a core component of your program from the very beginning. And that is very important. So by including security and architecture experts from the start and uh, thoroughly defining your business model and your legal terms, you can then um, sort of control and avoid many of these uh, potential threats. And the second thing that you can do is to start a small with a minimum viable product. That way you can start uh, testing, uh, monitoring results, getting feedback, and based on your learnings, you can either iterate or keep evolving your platform or your initiative. So we launched our first proof of concept with a very li limited set of APIs that were low risk in terms of data and were get only. And this helped address all those concerns from our stakeholders and get their buy-in to then scale up the initiative. So since then, we've been expanding the program, we've been adding more APIs, post, uh, post APIs as well, and adding on more capabilities that are closer to our core business. So this is stage, let's say that you have uh, started small, you have launched your MVP, and that is a huge milestone. But in fact, that is only the first step in the journey, because to make change happen, there is a still a long way to go. So here I want to share uh, three points that can help you navigate that post-launch and keep your stakeholders engaged. And the first one is communicating and communicating and communicating. Because when it comes to managing change, there is no such thing as over-communicating. So uh, just to tell, talk, talk, tell you about what happened to us. So um, we thought that most of our internal communication efforts were mostly done after we launched the API initiative. So we quickly moved to prioritizing external communications instead. Now, what we realized was that by doing so, we were losing some internal stakeholders engagement and some of our colleagues were actually still missing the big picture. So make sure that you keep reinforcing your narrative, that you keep celebrating milestones, and that you maintain all the feedback loops with your internal stakeholders. And also by communicating success stories early and often, uh, you can prove your case, you can get people excited about it, and you can gain further support. The second point uh, that is important is to measure what really matters. So remember I was telling you at the beginning how important it was to uh, build this compelling case? Well, I would say that at this stage, it becomes even more critical. Because uh, besides all those success stories, at some point you will be expected to present uh, metrics that are meaningful and that support your case. Plus, uh, monitoring what happens with your program is key to provide a strategic direction and to help you optimize and evolve the program. Now, I want to highlight two common mistakes that we made at the beginning and that you should try to avoid. And the first one is not to set up all the right tools and processes upfront. So in our case, we gather data coming from many different sources. So that way we can measure things like the traffic and the activity in the developer portal, the API usage, the community engagement, and the impact of our communication actions, among many other things. Now, the thing is that, that at the beginning, that monitoring was mostly done manually. And so we learned that getting lost in all the data can be as, as bad as going blind. So after that, we build uh, dashboards to connect to all the different tools and retrieve and display uh, automatically the information that really mattered to us. And that has been key to support our strategic decisions since then. And the second common mistake is focusing too much on vanity metrics. So by that, I mean, number of registered developers or number of APIs that you have in your program. Instead, try to focus on metrics that support your business goals as they evolve over time. So in our case, at the beginning, when we were launching the program and the platform, we would look a lot into operational and performance metrics and things like 
time to first hello world. Now, as the program evolved, we also started to look more into other metrics like number of active developers, the number of innovation use cases identified, and eventually uh, revenues as well. And the last point, which maybe is the most important one, is you should expect the unexpected because it is highly likely that more roadblocks will pop up. And it's important that you don't get discouraged because shaking your company foundation is not something that happens overnight. And change, like real change, takes time. So just to sum up uh, what we've covered, we've seen that your journey to launching an API initiative is full of challenges. But there are many tactics that you can put in place to overcome these obstacles. First, you can build a compelling case by highlighting the benefits of adopting APIs, the risks of not doing so, and making your vision tangible through prototyping and storytelling. Then you can uh, build the right uh, framework to execute the program by setting up an API governance to actively involve all relevant stakeholders while relying in a reference team for the program coordination. Then you can make risk management a core component of your program and start the small to minimize the risks. And then you can keep your stakeholders engaged by communicating early and often and uh, choosing some well thought metrics that can, that can support uh, your case. But um, I will say that besides all these tactics, um, the most important point is to never stop learning. And so something we've learned is that the API Days community is an amazing place to connect with people that have gone through um, similar challenges and to share stories and advice. So if you want to talk API strategy or bounce ideas around, just feel free to reach out on LinkedIn. Um, I'll be very, very happy to, to talk to you. And well, I, I hope that uh, you enjoy the, the rest of amazing presentations that we have scheduled for today. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. That was excellent. Uh, very practical advice there um, for, for getting an API program up and running. Uh, very good. Uh, I have a, a, a media question. That's um, you talk about, you know, having a clear case and presenting the value there is one of the first things you need to do. To what extent did you look into, uh, you know, the whole API as a product paradigm? Did that that come into play, or or was it separate? Yeah, no, of course, that is that is part of um, the the phase of, of building the, the case. Because as I was telling you, one of the challenges that we had, it was not explaining the, the value of APIs in itself. That was something that we had been doing for a long time. But the value of explaining uh, the, the additional value that APIs as products can bring to, to the company. And I think that for that, looking, as I was saying, to um, many other examples, not only in our industry, but beyond our industry, best practices implemented by other companies was incredibly powerful to explain our stakeholders why, why that kind of uh, shift in the mindset from you know just considering APIs integration layers to consider them really uh, strategic products. Uh, that part mm -hmm. was key. OK, see, and uh, you also mentioned in there um, when you're talking to your stakeholders and and you mentioned the word cannibalization that immediately for me invoked memories of uh, you know the whole kodak case right so there's a team in kodak who invented the digital camera uh, and and mm -hmm. you know kodak themselves said okay well this will kill our business right we, we can't have this and so so basically they 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 push it to one side and now obviously they're no longer around right so they missed that boat you know how do you how do you communicate that kind of story to a stakeholder that's I love that you mentioned that example because that is one of the stories that that came up. And indeed, we got these kind of comments of saying, hey, but what happens if we start exposing in an open way certain data? People use that to build products that eventually will compete with ours. So I think two things that, that I mentioned, one of them is looking into those stories of companies that have been disrupted precisely because they were working with that mindset. So again, one of, the, one of them is the example that you have mentioned. And the other one is stressing the value 
as I was saying, of all the different uh, benefits that we can get by um, opening the API. So it's like, okay, you will not be the only one uh, producing this, this kind of product anymore, but these are all the additional benefits that you are getting by opening to the community and creating this ecosystem around your APIs. Okay, so Eureka with the benefits and lead with those and say, okay, look, this is this is happening. And hey, great news. Disruption. Yes. <laughs> right. We, we have a couple of questions, believe it or not. Um, we, we have a question from Christina and uh, she says, okay, you mentioned before that it's important to involve everyone up and down across all teams. Where would you recommend to start with? Yeah, good question, because I was saying involve everyone. Obviously, you cannot start in all places at the same time, right? Um, okay, so I would say uh, first to start uh, by talking to those that are closer to the initiative, so people that are already working with APIs in the company, customer-facing teams that may be impacted by the, by the initiative. And at that point, what you want is really not to uh, sell the initiative, but more listening to them and learning from them and understanding their, their needs and concerns. That is going to help you adjust the value proposition, right, that, that you are going to present to your internal stakeholders. But then the next thing, for sure, uh, is getting the support from top management. Because uh, you can get a lot of people excited um, about the initiative at different levels. But at the end of the day, every team has their own objectives. Uh, they're focused sometimes in the short term because that's the way it works. So unless they get that kind of support from their top managers that uh, set the direction and say this is the, the way to go, it's really hard for them to maybe provide the support that, that is needed. And maybe the last, the last point that I will make is uh, don't get everyone in the room at the same time from the very beginning. You want to sort of like divide and conquer in the sense of talk to each one of the stakeholders separately, understand their concerns, and then when you have that compelling uh, story and value proposition that I was saying, then is when you you gather all of them. Yeah, good advice. You know, it resonates with me as well, saying, okay, you have to have someone, you know, ideally in the C-suite who, who believes in you uh, and is willing to, you know, enable you to get the job done. If you don't have that, then it's really an uphill battle. Absolutely. Um, so uh, another question from Anna, um, she says, okay, you mentioned developer relations. Could you expand a bit on the role that developer advocates can play during the initial steps of the project? Okay, yeah, so uh, very good point because as I said, like for some people, developer relations is mostly linked to that part of selling the APIs once they're live. In our case, we had people working in DevRel from the very beginning and that brought value in, in many ways. So first, when we were uh, defining the developer experience for our product, so we were building the platform, we were uh, building the first APIs. In terms of providing feedback, helping with the documentation, creating guides, uh, tools that would help developers, that was key. But then you also have to think that developer relations is sort of like the link between your company and the external world, right? Your, your, your users, which are ultimately those, those developers. And so the way we were building the platform and the APIs, uh, we were integrating uh, feedback from developers throughout all the way. So having those developer advocates um, leading beta testing, for example, uh, going to events and talking to the community. We had a few hackathons at the beginning before the launch to also collect that feedback that was um, incredibly, incredibly valuable. And I guess the last thing, as I said, they're sort of in between business and, and technical in the sense that they're people with good communication skills. You may know that sometimes getting the business and technical people aligned can be a struggle. Uh, they were extremely helpful also providing demos and presentations to internal stakeholders, and, and that helped a lot. All righty. Hey, Maria, um, we're, we're about out of time now. Thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.